But first, let's see another example, which is even more confusing. So another thing that people say is important in the end game is pawn promotion. We say the pawns become more valuable pieces. But here's a game that I played as a beginner. You guys might know the starting moves. I played this game in um, 2009 when I learned chess. This was one of my first tournament games. And I just remembered it because um, it, was, it was easy to remember. But at that point in time, I lost a lot of my score sheets, even though I was trying to write my moves and be systematic. So this opening is Albin Counter Gambit. It's complete garbage. Don't even try. But e3 is a mistake for white. It turns out it's not such a hideous mistake. It's not like black's winning here. But it's certainly an inaccuracy. I think that the best move here is probably knight f3 or bishop f4. Although I have to say I haven't checked on the theory in this in something like 10 years. Because I just remember it being really bad. It didn't work for me after probably a couple months and I immediately dumped it like garbage. I found this uh, interesting plan that involves knight d2 to b3 to pressure this pawn a lot. And I found that if I play c5, this bishop's bad. So it's a really bad opening. All right, so Plan Chess Club suggesting perhaps realization of endgame is a ratio of some sort of proximity to king hunting. Hmm. So you mean like, um, like at some point we're going to get into a king hunt and that's kind of the end game? I mean, it's, it's possible, but I... I think that we should approach it from a strategic point of view. That's actually my thesis here. So in, in the game they played e3, and I just want to show you how this pawn became an all-star. After pawn takes e3, I drop a bishop. Oh no, beginner chess, but then pawn takes f2. So this pawn's making a run for it, and you would think that the race would end right here with king takes f2, but the queen's hanging. So I've been playing like this ever since I was a beginner. So you might say I'm actually still a beginner. Um, but here they play king e2, better move, because you don't want to lose your queen. But this provoked me to make yet another pawn move. Can anyone guess the, the move for black? Under promotion to uh, bishop because bishops are extremely valuable at this phase of the game? Yes, knight. Because it's check. <laughs> and uh, this is the earliest I've ever promoted. It's the earliest I will ever promote in my life because the fastest you can promote is in five moves and this is on move seven. So uh, yeah, I was kind of lucky to get this. Yeah, there is something to be said for having the bishop there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but the reason I didn't choose a queen is that they can trade queens very precise and then this position is unclear at best probably much better for white although i haven't looked at this concretely in a long time again i just remembered this when i was preparing for the the lecture so we promote to a knight it's check and they can't take it because of bishop g4 and we win a queen for free all right i think planet chess club is suggesting that the whole purpose of chess is actually an endgame. Maybe the aesthetic crown jewel is an endgame with no tactics, crowned by a single checkmating attack. It could be true. But then how do we approach the endgame? That's the real question. All right, so chess guy said, what if king e1? Good question. That's what happened in the game. I played queen h4 check. And after g3, queen e4, uh, I'm pretty sure they resigned right here. They might have played one or two more pathetic moves, but... This was the end. Great big roast. So um, that was a disaster for them. But it's an example of promotion as early as you possibly can without playing a complete awful position. So this is not an end game, but we're seeing promotion. So we can't define it by just Swugswang. We can't define it by just promotion. We can't define it just by the activity of the king. My counterexample showed that.